Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Kusile Power Station Project General Manager Abram Masangu spoke to Skulk Berger about the Kusile construction project and explained how it's managed to remain on schedule for first synchronization in 2016. The 2,500 hectare Kusile Power Station being built in Mpumalanga sees 17,000 people from 120 companies entering the site every day. It is located east of the coal mining town of Emalahleni. Kusile Power Station Project General Manager Abra Masangu gave Engineering News some insight into what is required of a project manager to ensure that so many people, companies and cultures operate together smoothly. Masangu mentioned that the project manager must be accessible to all stakeholders and, so doing, create channels of communication through which all parties can make their concerns known and through which consensus can be reached on matters affecting several parties. Besides creating and maintaining communications channels, the project manager must also manage the expectations of the culturally varied teams, including performance expectations and community development. Masango explains some of the reasons why a project manager on a large construction site must be hands-on and involved. I've got uh, different discipline, construction, contract management, commercial claims department, safety department that is managing the, the entire project. It's always very hectic from day to day. As you can see when you're looking at the number of people that are here on site, every day, every morning, the different construction managers and contract managers are sitting with different contractors having their toolbox talk that takes like you know 30 minutes and then in that toolbox talk they talk about the safety issues where they do the risk assessment where they do the job observation where they discuss the day-to-day -day activities that needs to be done in that particular day but without you know compromising any safety i'm very hands-on personally because if you are not hands-on it's difficult to manage this type of a project uh, because we've got all the divert diversities in this in in this project we've got uh, People who are, are coming from other countries, they are here. Uh, we've got uh, different uh, people in, in this country. And then all of them you have to integrate and make sure that they are managed and they are managed properly. Are the news making headlines this week? The impact on jobs is still uncertain as SASL gets set to implement its streamlined model. MTN South Africa lags behind as international operations shine and SASL eyes northern Mozambique's gas monetization prospects. Energy and Chemicals Group Sassel will pull the trigger on its streamlined operational structure on July 1st, with CEO David Constable forecasting a minimum of 3 billion rand in sustainable yearly savings as a result of the reorganization. At our results announcement in September last year, I told you that our 2013 financial year would be a watershed for Sassel. After all, in FY13, we consciously moved away from coal to liquids, coal to liquids growth and stepped up our gas to liquids ambitions. At the same time, we accelerated our low carbon power generation initiatives and drove safe and more efficient operations. As part of this step change, we reprioritized our project pipeline to deliver tangible and sustainable value. And crucially, we focused the entire company on a single set of priorities, which included the urgent need to address our cost creep. Telecommunications giant MTN has reported higher earnings for the year to December as its international operations bolstered its performance. Headline earnings per share went up 27.3% to 1,386 cents and the final dividend for 2013 up 25.6% to 1,035 cents. South Africa did have a rather disappointing um, subscriber uh, performance uh, specifically in the first half but we did see improvement um, in the second half as we indicated um, last uh, when we had the half year results we believe that our response to the competitive environment was probably not as effective uh, but we're satisfied that the initiatives that were brought in during the second half um, have started um, showing um, um, some, some good results 
Sassel says the gas discoveries in the north of Mozambique are large enough to support significant additional gas monetization options over and above the liquefied natural gas opportunities currently being considered. Uh, as, as part of our deliberations and, and recently we've spoken with our board as well about our aspirations to, to play an important role in Mozambique, both, both in monetizing the, the gas that's been found and, and the, the additional gas that we think is, 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 is available in the southern Mozambican area. Um, so we're active there and, and looking at projects uh, and, and looking at working together with the Mozambican government to monetize that gas. But we're also talking to, to players that are in the, in the, let's call it the northern Mozambican basins, which is still early, as you know, but, but there is a lot of gas there. And, and it's in the context of that that we believe that, that the gas reserves in, in Mozambique do lend themselves to monetization opportunities. Uh, and and we, we carefully monitor that space and, and try to understand how our own GTL can play a role. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.